Hello everyone. Uh, we want to make a video this time around. We want to show uh, this Planet 600 air spindle. And if you've been following my older videos, you know that I had a Planet 550, and I always wanted to upgrade to the 600 because I like the collet system uh, that's on there uh, a lot nicer. But uh, I just got this set up and been playing with it and uh, uh, doing some testing on it. Uh, but this seems to be a little more powerful than the Planet uh, 550. I think the collet system is going to hold the uh, uh, wheels a little bit better and truer. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen these videos, what I've done is I've made a uh, a bracket that I can I can pull uh, the guarding off my surface grinder, and then I can just bolt this right on. And so I have this. Uh, so there's a little clearance in these screw holes. So that I can, I can get a, uh, you know, a little bit up and down adjustment on there. Plus, uh, this is mounted on a boss back here, and it is screwed in so that I can turn this head uh, in and out this way. And what that does is I can line up this wheel so that the uh, center line of this spindle, I can get that running uh, true this way and true this way. And then in the setup, I have a spin fixture uh, that I have mounted <coughs> 90 degrees uh, from the way I normally uh, set it so that I can get it spinning and I can do ID work. I can actually do uh, OD work with it. Uh, also, by using uh, uh, some of my templates in the back, it's real easy to get 30, 45 degrees, 10, 15, whatever template I have set up. I can throw a sign bar in there. I can get some really super accurate angles by turning this whole spin fixture uh, at an angle. So this setup I've been using now, uh, not not this, but uh, with other uh, NSK Planet uh, air spindles. I've been using probably for about three or four decades just about. About three decades. And uh, so so this is set up real nice, so when I want to set this up, all I have to do is I have to run the indicator across here, get it true, and then in the, run the indicator across here, get it true, and that spindle will be within one ten thousandth of an inch running uh, true to the axis. One of the nice things about setting this up on the surface grinder is I do have a digital on here that has a 50 millionth resolution, and uh, maybe Kathy can pan to that. And so that works really nice. Uh, one of the things that you got to remember is uh, when you're grinding over here, if you don't uh, change from radius to diameter, which I don't like to do because if I forget to switch the other way around, I usually scrap parts. So I usually leave the digital alone. But uh, if, if you would change from radius to diameter, you have to remember to change it back when you go to regular surface grinding. If you don't change it and use it the way I do, uh, and then you got to remember if I take off one thousandths, uh, off the digital, that's one thousandths per side, which is two thousandths per diameter. Right now, I'm using the CBN grinding wheel, and uh, Kathy has taken some close-ups of it. I've been playing around with it a little bit. I've already taken uh, about fifty thousandths stock out of the hole, and I was just seeing uh, how tough it was. Now, this hole was one millimeter offset, and so I was going to grind most of that uh, out of there anyhow. But the CBN grinds really free, grinds really good, and uh, I got to where I was taking three thousandths per side, six thousandths total, and you can hear it bog it down a little bit, but it's still ground up pretty good. And normally I wouldn't even grind that much with CBN. Usually about the most I would take is about a thou per side just because of uh, the depth of the resin. Uh, the amount of the material that's sticking out of it. If you get too aggressive with it, you'll start tearing up these these points, and they're pretty expensive. So, but I was just trying to see uh, how much guts this thing had, and I'm pretty happy with it. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple little light cuts on there. Kathy's already zoomed up on the finish that I've done there, uh, and she's got some still pictures so you can see the finish. And with CBN. Uh, it looks rougher than it really is. If you would run a profilometer under there, you'll find out that it actually has a pretty pretty good uh, a surface finish on it yet, even though it looks rougher. But what I want to do today, I want to go ahead and uh, 
take this wheel right now at CBN and if you look at the still picture you can see that it's loaded up and so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and just take a cut on here uh, and then uh, just to show you it in action and then I'm gonna take a white stick and I'll explain that and I'm gonna clean all that buildup that you see in the still picture out we're gonna come back and we're gonna take another cut and we're gonna see if we get a better finish and then the other thing I want to do is uh, I want to take a stone wheel and, uh, and compare the finish with the stone wheel and then last uh, what I'll probably do is kick this at an angle and show you how easy it is to set up an angle and grind an angle on the idea of your parts plus one of the things that we've done we showed pictures on Instagram we'll probably put a steel picture in here too uh, I have a radius dresser that we we've been getting some pretty good eBay finds here pretty soon or pretty lately and uh, actually I'll <clears throat> see if I can just set that and down there so so we got uh, this radius dresser I gotta get some better diamonds in before I do a video on this one uh, but with this I can actually turn uh, this around 90 degrees I can turn around and dress some radiuses on the end of the wheel uh, convex and concave and then do some precision grinding that way and uh, so we'll probably do some of that in the future as well <clears throat> anyhow one of the things I've noticed is uh, this air spindle uh, it has the the muffler right up here the other one I had with the 550 went on a cable and that was dangling down and uh, uh, this one seemed to actually be a little more quiet about half the noise other nice feature about this is it's always blowing uh, you can feel air coming out pretty good in the front so it's blowing air over here and keeping all the deburbs away uh, it does make it messy here and uh, so <clears throat> anyways uh, that's one of the things uh, that's nice because it does keep your part cool so we'll turn this on a minute. I gotta get right in front of the camera a second. When you're grinding, you before you touch in, you usually want to touch in off at the back, but then you do your feeding at the back. So I just barely touch it, and I'm just going to take a few tenths out just so we can see how good of a finish we can get. So I wound in about two or three tenths per side. So you. Uh, and then you just hand feed that, come back nice and slow. let it spark out a little bit and again that's just a light cut And the finish looks pretty much like what we've seen in the still picture there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a, a white stick and we're going to uh, uh, clean this wheel out a minute. Anyhow, what we have here is a, a aluminum oxide uh, uh, calm cleaning sticks. Uh, I wrote down the grit. These are uh, 220 uh, grit. Uh, they're a hardness, so they're very soft. 
And what I'm going to do is I need to clean some of that uh, buildup out of here. And uh, I want to uh, expose a little bit of uh, more of the CBN over there, take some of the rough parts out. And so I'll use one of these uh, cleaning sticks. And I'm going to clean this up and we'll show you before and after. And so I just got through soaking this in coolant because these things, if they're dry, they're very aggressive and you can actually change your shape and everything. You can see a heavier line right here on the wheel. That's because the back of this is all relieved and this is actually the point where it's starting to grind at. And uh, so uh, basically how you use these is you get your wheel spinning. And because it does have air pushing out the front over here, I'm just going to put this up so whatever particles that blows over there won't get in the nuts and bolts of that. See how you get it spinning and you just touch in a little bit. You don't have to be really aggressive with it. It doesn't take much if you get aggressive with this and then you're going to lose the shape of your wheel. Now the CBN over there, what I like uh, with this is that it's actually pretty nice in, in regards uh, to uh, aluminum oxide wheels because it's hard to cut yourself on, on these. Aluminum oxide, boy, if you touch those while they're spinning by nicking in a lot of time, uh, you're, you're cutting through flesh real good. Uh, these will cut steel real good, but they, they're pretty easy on the, on the flesh. Now I'm going to take in, uh, uh, clean some of the powder off of here real quick. Uh, I'm going to get some coolant or, uh, and kind of dribble over that. And uh, we'll do that off camera just so we can see uh, how clean we got all that buildup. Okay, so we just cleaned all the metal buildup and some probably rough spots in there. You can see I didn't use very much uh, of this wheel. You can see a lot of the dirt and particles uh, in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a light cleanup cut and we're going to see if we get a little bit better finish because uh, that CBN wheel uh, uh, is actually doesn't, doesn't have the load that it has on there or did have on there. Just taking a real light cut, about a couple tenths. I don't know if the finish is going to be much better because it was pretty good to begin with. One of the nice things with the CBN, you don't have to true it up like you do a stone. I. Like I said, I ground over 50 thousandths uh, off that wheel right there, and I could have kept grinding on it a whole lot more. And, and the thing will last a long time. Uh, the CBN, uh, CBN wheel, they're uh, in the super abrasive category. And what's nice is that they'll cut some of the really hard, nasty steel pretty easy. And, and they cut free and you don't get the heat build up a lot of times that you get in the stone. Now I never trued uh, this wheel uh, with a, a special diamond. I haven't trued it so it may be even running out a little bit and I'm still getting an awesome finish for CBN. But actually true the wheel up and I don't have those tools coming in for about a week yet. Uh, I could get a little bit better finish yet there too. So I put a stone wheel in. I believe those were 46 grit. Uh, they're uh, the, the ruby color aluminum oxide. Uh, I got my diamond tool. I can bolt it right down into the front holes right here. I'm using a clustered diamond. I already roughed this down a little bit, but I'm going to do just a little bit of the finish work.
and uh, uh, we'll come in and then we'll grind and uh, see how nice it works. Now the beauty with the CBN, well I can dress that thing out and I can run 20, 30, 40, 50 pieces out uh, without even having to mess with the thing. And the thing that's neat, we've done it before in the past where I might have 20 parts that need to hold the same diameter on the ID and once I get my digital set on that first one and it's finished in, by the time I do the last one, if I'm moving in two or three tenths, or not tenths but thousands, that's about all the wear that I'm getting on the wheel. With a stone wheel, you're going to grind one part and you may dress it uh, to finish it up on your last couple passes and then grind your second part, redress it, finish it up. And, and so forth. So you're going to dress this wheel out a whole lot more with the stone wheel because it's going to load up and it's just going to need dressing. So right now I got the entire wheel down to the, well, uh, this diameter and so the next thing I want to do, I just want to re, uh, dress it, get a nice dress going across and then what I want to do is I want to relieve it in uh, this area back here. I only want about uh, 150 thousandths or are so exposed in the front. I don't want this entire surface cutting. So this is what we're going to do right now. Okay, so I felt a real nice cut right there. And I'm just going to not come all the way across now. I'm going to, in fact, I'll go deeper than I normally do, just so I hope that we can see it. And if Kathy can zoom up on the wheel, you can probably see I got a high on the end here. Actually, uh, I, I got less than I wanted to. A single point works better for this kind of uh, stuff. You have more control at that point. But this will work for the purposes uh, that we're using. We're just wanting to see the difference between a well-dressed stone wheel and an undressed CBN on the finish there. Now we're going to have to touch off. I'm going to actually have it running the same direction the, the wheel is here. There we go. Reset the digital. That right there is about one thou per side. Take about two tenths a side. When I say two tenths, I'm talking two one thousandths uh, of an inch. Or actually, two ten thousandths of an inch. And okay, we just wound in probably less than a tenth here per side. We'll come across nice and easy. We'll blink past it and we'll see what that finish looks like. Barely sparking on uh, the blank path, so it's cutting nice and free. And now you can actually see about how much that I'm using to grind with. I usually like it to be about twice that. But it was hard to see where I'm at. And uh, you can see that discoloration on the end. That was the part that was actually grinding. And we'll see if Kathy can get a close-up and compare. 
And, and the finish is uh, a little bit nicer. It's not a whole lot nicer, but you can you can tell it is a little bit better. What we're going to do now is we're going to try to put a, a 45 degree angle on there and see how well that works. And I'm just going to use one of my 45 uh, degree angles. It's very precision ground. I'm going to use that uh, going against the back rail here and against the side. Get it positioned just right. magnet on and because this wheel is pretty close to the side of that diameter it may make things a little more tricky so I got to be careful how deep that I will come in so I'm going to set my, my stop so I don't hit the other side and what I'm going to do because I want to rough a nice 45 on there I'm, I'm going to come all the way in and just plunge straight in and use this back relief area to do a lot of the hogging uh, on that part. worked out just about right because uh, the battery died on the camera I had to replace that so now we're going to just come up and we're going to touch it on the uh, you know, full the high spot on the wheel Getting pretty good touch Yeah, that just left just an awesome finish on there. Uh, uh, probably one of the best finishes I've seen for grinding like that. And we'll get a still picture of that as well, trying to capture that. But that just shows you some of the simple things that you can do. Now, I just purchased another uh, item on eBay. This is uh, this unit's from Herrick. It's pretty nice, but there's a, like a one-tenth tick total indicator reading that I've seen and I've, I've had a half a dozen different units that I use like this and I see it in all of them so I don't know if it's in the drive system I don't know if it's in the bearings that they use or what uh, they do have Herrick has a, a, a more higher precision units that they cost a lot but the one that I had my eye on was actually from uh, a suburban tool many of you probably uh, saw some of Don Bailey's uh, uh, videos he's the owner of that he makes a suburban master grind and we got a good deal off of eBay I'm a little bit skittish because the seller is taking his time uh, releasing uh, the thing so I'm not sure if we're getting scammed here or not I guess we'll find out here in a few days but but uh, the price was right it was supposedly a brand new item uh, in an open box and What's nice about that is I'll be able to take that unit and set it up for all my ID work. I can build a faceplate in a certain way where I can get longer parts. One of the things I want to use, especially with angle work, is in uh, the squareness comparators. I want to be able to mount this up and grind this angle, get a real nice smooth finish. And with this one, I, uh, my center line, I'm going to be hitting way down in here and I can't do that. So I need to have something uh, where I can have uh, a lot more distance between the bottom plate and that and I can do that with that suburban tool one and I might even be able to do it somewhat with this but it would be a lot more difficult. And so I got some future plans for, for using some of this stuff, some of the uh, 
low profile uh, precision sign plates I'm making. I'm wanting to set it up so that I can grind uh, the holes from the four inches uh, between center to center in, in that, with using that Suburban tool and using some fixturing where I can nail that four inch right on. I have a lot better control uh, with the accuracy and sizing and so uh, it's going to be real important that we have a real good accurate spin fixture that uh, uh, has got a good TIR with the Suburban tool. I believe it's a 50 millionth total indicator run out. Uh, what they have on those. Uh, so they got a very high class bearing in there and works real good. So anyhow, we're going to have Kathy come up over here and she's going to take uh, some close-up uh, photos of this and, and uh, let you take a look at that. Yeah, so anyways, I know this video is very similar to the one we made with the Planet 550, but I know we have a lot of new subscribers that haven't seen this. Uh, this unit I really like. I've done some extremely high precision uh, grinding, actually small part jig grinding, uh, using face plates and fixturing work. Uh, hold intolerance is plus or minus a tenth on diameters and locations. And so if, if you have a surface grinder, you don't have an a, a ID grinder, this is an option. This Planet 650 with the regulator set. I got from CBD Corn, and uh, they're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I got it a little, uh, with the two collets, uh, eighth inch and a quarter, uh, a little under three grand. And uh, I know the owner there, so I'm not sure if he gave me a little bit of a discount or not. He may have. I, I know you have, uh, was it Artco, right? Uh, and what was that standing for? And this is on the West Coast. Yes, American Rotary too. I just forgot what that was. They're on the West Coast. I think they're out of California. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you're on that side of uh, the nation there and you're interested, they carry these too. And uh, you can talk with Wolfgang over there. He'll be happy to set you up. But these are nice tools. You can use this tool uh, on a mill in a boring head. And so that you can use it as a jig grinder on your uh, milling center. You can put this tool... Uh, and adapt it with a holder you can stick it on your lathe as a tool post grinder so this thing uh, is actually quite nice you can use it on multiple machines and that spindle on this thing is extremely accurate it runs smooth and this planet 600 there's a lot of power in there I'm, I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing on this so far so if you guys are interested in something like that uh, give them a call. Uh, you might think like you know three grand well that's a lot of money well I tell you what check out how much an ID uh, a grinder that would even come close to the accuracy and quality work you're going to get off that's going to cost you and then you'll find out that this is really a nice option so anyways that'll be it for this week we'll talk to you next time